All right, good afternoon. My name is Josh Berger. I'm the police chief. I want to welcome everybody out today to the award ceremony. Uh, before we get started, I recognize a couple people. Uh, Mayor Wagner, thank you for coming out. Uh, Mayor Chief Staff Dan Pennington, Director of Communications Rex Lindbergh, um, Councilman Thomas Shanebott, who I inadvertently left out the other day, and Councilwoman Pat Manhout. Um, I want to thank you all for coming out. Um, in my notes, I put wing it. Um, because that's what I'm going to do is wing it. Um, but it, it is truly an honor to be able to give out awards and recognize the men and women of the department for the good work that they do. Um, you know, as, as I'm about to leave, you know, one of the things that, you know, this department astonishes me every day is just the good work that happens. And there's so much of it that happens that I only know about a little bit of it. And I always say I, it's good and bad. I think the good part of it is it tells me that the men and women are out there doing it because it's the right thing to do and not for the recognition or the glory are the awards, but they're doing it because they know that's the right thing to do. Um, the downside to that is uh, we don't get to recognize them, and, and there's a lot of work that goes unrecognized. And um, you know, we had a promotion ceremony here on Monday, and one of the things I talked about was, you know, recognizing the work that the men and women here do every day. And um, I, I don't care who you are; it is always nice to hear a kind word from a supervisor to be recognized for your efforts when you go above and beyond. And so, this is one of those forums where we can come out and recognize. Um, each of you for the work that you do each and every day. And the first award we're going to give today is the Community Impact Award. It's designed to honor and recognize members of the Pasadena Police Department for their contributions and volunteer service to improve the quality of life for the citizens of Pasadena. Any member may be nominated for this award when during the course of their duty they identify and resolve a significant quality of life issue for an individual or group of individuals in the city of Pasadena. Actions taken by the nominee to resolve the problem should be self-initiated and not required as part of their current assignment. And we're going to give out two of those awards today. The first one I'm going to give uh, to Officer David Garz. And David, if you'll come up here for me, please. Um, I think every award ceremony we have, um, David Garz is standing up here getting this award um, because this is who David is. David's compassionate. Um, David's always finding a way to, to help people in the community. Um, I always say David and his, I'll come your sidekick at least because i got two days left so I can do that. Um, his sidekick, uh, Officer Robertson, they're, they're two folks that, you know, I have fun with them, but in all seriousness, they're two guys that I know when there's a problem that we need taken care of, um, whether it's police-related or otherwise, that I, I can give it to them. They're going to go out there and they're going to get taken care of, um, and I'm not going to hear about it again. And so it, it is nice, I know, not just for me, but your supervisors as well, that when we hand you something, you're going to go take care of it. We don't have to follow up to make sure that it's done because you're going to do it the right way. David's getting the award for in December of 2022, David Hickman's home, he's a citizen, was struck by a stolen vehicle, leaving a large hole waiting to be repaired for months. The family had saved up funds to repair it, um, but then the family's own home was uh, damaged by the tornado in January of 2023. <clears throat> Mr. Hickman lives across the street from L.F. Smith Elementary, and this, uh, the school's parent coordinator, Fina Jovia, mentioned the damaged officer Garza while he was preparing to do a back to school event this past summer, which is another event that David does every year, giving back to kids. Um, when David heard about this, he coordinated multiple friends, organization, business owners to come together and fix Mr. Hickman's home in a single day. Um, David took Saturday, his own time, coordinated his own resources to go out there and get this done. Um, and it was fixed. I, I saw the pictures um, and the family was ecstatic because they, quite frankly, didn't have the funds to do it, and you got their home back to being a home. Officer Garza embodies the spirit of the Community Impact Award through a selfless service and a commitment to helping others without any expectation of payment or recognition. I want to congratulate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I put on a, my 10 minute speech. You won't fall asleep. I, I literally timed it. It's, it's minute and 10 seconds. Okay. Uh, first, I want to thank God for his blessings. Um, I'd like to mention the people involved in helping with the building project that I'm being recognized for um, Councilman Ibarra, Councilman Guerrero, Ms. Delfina Govea with L.F. Smith Elementary. Ms. Alicia and Raul Cardenas family with Gladiator Roofing and Bath Fitters, uh, Mr. Adrian Sanchez with IGIT Ministries, Mr. Gerardo Bonilla and Mr. Amaya with Materiales 
Amaya. And uh, also special thanks to city permits officials, Larry Aleman, and assistant building supervisor, James Smith. And a special thanks to Seabrook officer, Cardenas. Um, she has volunteered uh, her time on many passing of PD events. Appreciate that. I'm accepting this award on behalf of those people I've mentioned. Uh, it was an honor to work with those in our community who volunteered their time and efforts to help someone in need. These type of community involved projects could not have been done without support from our police department, our mayor, and uh, I wanna thank Chief Ruger and Assistant Chief Wright for their continuous support for these type of efforts. Thank y'all for having me here, appreciate it. I'd like to invite Officer Jose Ortiz up here. <clears throat> Officer Ortiz received a call for service involving a woman stranded at Walmart with no family or friends to help her get home. Officer Ortiz provided Ms. Yar with a courtesy ride and fixed the immediate issue. This is what uh, we would expect of any officer, but Officer Ortiz took it upon himself to go a few steps further in providing some selfless service to Ms. Yar. Officer Ortiz noted that Ms. Yar's living conditions were shockingly substandard. Her apartment had fallen into disrepair with sewage, rodents, mold, and roaches, and all left unchecked and unrepaired. Officer Ortiz began volunteering his own time and money to assist her with food, doctor appointments, and medication. This is clearly above and beyond what would be expected of any officer, but is a clear picture of Officer Ortiz's heart for service and truly caring for those in need. And I know this isn't the first time you've received this award, is it? Uh, it was second. Second, because this is what Officer Ortiz does is um, whenever he comes across somebody that's in need in our community, um, he steps up and helps. I think the other one was a gentleman during the freeze, I think, where the family couldn't get a hold of him. Um, but this, again, is who you are, and you're compassionate, um, and you have truly have a, a servant heart. And you later contacted um, Ms. Yar City Councilman, and y'all worked um, together to begin the process of addressing the issues at our apartment with city services. And we we're truly fortunate to have people like you among our ranks who are willing to show what it means to serve with a purpose. And it is my privilege to give you the community impact award. Thank you. I just want to say thank you for being recognized, but I really need to give the credit where the credit's due. My longtime friend, Jennifer Reyna from KHOU Channel 11, uh, reached out to her just the very next day after this call and I explained to her the whole incident and she immediately said, I wanna meet the lady and can we make it happen? And so the very next day we went out to the apartment and that's where she's the one that initiated all of this and got all, the, all this started. So I kind of feel guilty taking the credit for it when you know, it was all her idea, but thank you anyway. The next award is the Outstanding Performance Award, and it may be uh, awarded to employees who display a high degree of initiative and professionalism in the performance of their duties. And Sergeant Wilkerson, if you'll come up for me, please. <clears throat> so, Lieutenant McGill sent a write-up to the awards committee recommending uh, Sergeant Wilkerson for this award, and the awards committee um, deemed it appropriate to award him this. Between March and May of 2023, uh, 23, three of the four positions in the Juvenile Crimes Division became open. The positions were filled with capable officers who were selected through the process, but were still untrained investigators. Sergeant Wilkerson, who was then assigned to planning and research in the Chief's Office, volunteered for a temporary assignment at Juvenile Crimes to assist with caseload, as well as training and mentoring the new investigators. Chris was placed on call, assumed cases from previous investigators, and took on a full caseload assignment. Most impressively, Chris did all of this while still fulfilling his role in planning and research, essentially doing two jobs for several months. Lieutenant McGill and Sergeant Levizinski praised Chris for his professionalism, department and juvenile law knowledge, and cited his most valuable contribution to be his mentorship of the new investigators as they acclimated to their new roles. Chris was proactive in his leadership and teamwork, even taking it upon himself to update the unit's procedures and presentations to be given at muster and in the community. Chris, I wanna thank you for your selfless contribution to the department and we look for, uh, forward to reaping the benefits of your leadership as a supervisor. Congratulations.
Next, I'd like to invite Kevin Satterwhite to come up. As Kevin's coming up. One thing I'm going to say is Kevin is no stranger. I think you've received this award or similar awards several times. Um, Kevin works in burglary and theft, and Kevin's one of those guys that you can give him whatever. He's going to take care of it. He's going to follow it, you know, to his logical conclusion, which usually means people get identified and put in jail. Um, and, and I'm going to embarrass him for a minute because I was up in detectives earlier today, and he knows where this is going. Um, and when I was up there, his detectives were giving him a hard time for a case that he recently worked. Um, but it, it was a case of counterfeit um, high-end purses. And so he did put a lot of effort into it, um, ended up setting up a sting, buying some some counterfeit high-end purses, um, and ended up resulting in some charges. But, I mean, that's the guy Kevin is. Give it to him. Kevin's going to take care of it. So let me tell you what he's being recognized here uh, today. He investigated a series of copper and wire thefts in early 2023. He noted that the thefts were occurring at nighttime hours and linked to, ver uh, to the thefts of four others in Houston, one in Seabrook, one in Webster, and two in Mont Bellevue. He adjusted his hours to work night shift and coordinated with Deer Park and Seabrook to conduct surveillance. He observed a known suspect vehicle occupied by three known suspects commit a theft on the night of March 3rd, 2023. Deer Park Police Department and patrol units were able to stop the vehicle in the city of Deer Park. Detective Satterwhite charged four, suspect in, four suspects in Harris County with engaging in organized crime and theft of metal, both felonies. The total economic impacts of the of the thefts on the businesses in Pasadena was estimated to be approximately $250,000 or a quarter of a million dollars. Detective Satterwhite's investigation in coordination with outside agencies prevented further damage and brought four criminals to justice. Detective Satterwhite should be com commended for his commitment to service, professionalism, and devotion to duty. Congratulations. Like some of the others have stated before me, this wasn't an individual effort on this particular case. I worked with uh, other members of my unit, uh, helper surveillance just didn't happen to be out there the night that, that we actually caught them. Uh, members of the PPU from Pasadena Police Department also assisted uh, with surveillance on a couple nights. And uh, then I also worked with Deer Park P Police Department detectives, Seabrook detectives, and HPD detectives. Uh, it was a coordinated effort. In fact, the night that we took them down, I think all agencies were represented except for Houston, who happened to not be there that night. Um, there was a coordinated effort with all the agencies. Um, definitely not something I could have done on my own, nor could I have done without my own unit. Um, so I want to thank them, because just as the others said, I've kind of received this on their behalf as well, because it was a joint effort. I'd like to invite Officers Emily Guerra, Daniel Campos, Todd Nealon, and Officer Turner and Officer, former Officer Cervantes are not here. If y'all come up over here for me. I'll tell you a little bit about what they did to be recognized. Officers were dispatched to a male discharging a firearm in an apartment complex on April 28, 2023, with dispatch noting that they could overhear gunshots over the phone. Officers Angel Cervantes and Emily Guerra arrived on scene and located a male matching the description given by dispatch. Short foot pursuit ensued when officers contacted the male who ran into an apartment and attempted to barricade himself inside. Officer Cervantes and Guerra quickly adapted to the situation and created distance while others established a perimeter. Officers Ray Perez, Daniel Campos, Todd Nealon, Mark Turpin, Officer Vanderwerf secured the exterior while officers Michael Turner, Andrew Rahm, and Jeremy Williams gathered witness accounts and assisted with the identification of the suspect. A patrol d drone was deployed by Officer Neyland and Officer Turpin to provide aerial coverage of the scene. Officers, Camp Officers Campos and Neyland located three shell casings, and Officer Turner located a fourth in an area consistent with witness accounts of the shooting. The owner of the apartment was initially uncooperative, but eventually gave consent to search the apartment. Officers arrested the shooter and located two guns, both of which were stolen, hidden behind a washing machine. These officers' quick and decisive actions helped remove two stolen guns from our streets, and ended a dangerous situation that was less than 200 feet from an elementary school. I want to congratulate you all for your efforts on this.
Go for it. <laughs> Excellent. I would say something. I'd like to thank God first for always protecting me and my brothers and sisters in this department as well and the support of my family. And um, also, Chief, I was also an FTO at the time. So not only dealing with that, someone shooting in the area, but also being graded at the same time. So much pressure at that time. So it's great to be recognized. So thank you. That's a lot of pressure, and I think you have a long career. If you pass that, I think you're going to think you're going to do all right. Uh, the next award is the Distinguished Service Award. It may be issued to any officer who saves a human life or prevents the consequences of a major crime in the performance of their duty while either on or off duty, and does so with known fear or risk to their own life. I'd like to invite up Officer Chipris, Officer Baker, and Officer Mestizo. <coughs> I'll tell you a little bit about what they did. Officers were dispatched to a shooting call on March 5th, 2023, and were initially told that a man had shot a woman and that dispatchers could hear screaming in the background. Numerous evening shift officers responded to the scene. Officers Mestizo, Chipris, and Baker were the first to arrive on the scene, and in the following moments, they took actions that saved multiple lives. It was learned that the suspect had developed a romantic obsession with a woman and had just discharged a firearm and then dragged the woman into an apartment, leaving her daughter outside and afraid for her mother's life. Officers heard screaming from inside the apartment and knew that the victim's life was in immediate danger. The officers forced the door open, allow allowing the victim to run outside while they encountered a man inside holding a gun to his head. The suspect pulled the trigger and was surprised when the gun didn't fire. I'm sure the officers were surprised too. Um, as he lowered the gun in an attempt to clear the malfunction, Officer Tri Chipper's transitioned from his patrol rifle to a taser and deployed it just as the suspect was reinserting the magazine into the gun. The suspect was immobilized and the firearm was removed from his grasp. After a brief struggle, the suspect was taken into custody and unharmed. The suspect had intended to murder the victim and then commit suicide in the presence of the victim's daughter. The brave and selfless actions taken by these officers saved her life and removed a violent criminal from our streets. And it is my honor to award you all with the Distinguished Service Award. Face the guy with a gun, but they won't face a microphone. <laughs> um, that's going to conclude the award ceremony. But again, one last thing I just want to say is, you know, a round of applause for all the men and women that are being recognized today. But truly, the the, the good work that goes on here every day um, that makes my job a lot easier um, when you have men and women that are willing to go out there, um, lay their lives on the line for other people, and then reach out and be compassionate to the community as well. And that's one thing I have preached all along: is we can be tough on bad guys and compassionate at the same time. They are not mutually exclusive. And I think this department does a wonderful job of that. And so that's going to conclude the ceremony. There is cake and punch down the hall on the right. Um, and I invite you to stick around and, and visit with the award recipients. But y'all have a good afternoon. <clears throat>